Whoa. All right. Welcome to this video. This is the, um, the launch of the backstage pass is happening, uh, this week. It happened, uh, on Sunday, just gone. And, um, it's, it's happening for the next couple of days. It's going to finish up on Friday. I think there's two or three days to go or whatever. And so I wanted to just share in this video, if you didn't catch the launch, um, and you're not up to speed yet, or you haven't had time, or whatever it might be. I just wanted to fill you in with what's happening. So in, in this video, I'm going to try and keep this as short as I can, but to give you a bit of an idea as to why I'm doing this thing, what what is the Backstage Pass, and why am I doing it. So the first part, the the quickest way to explain this is that it's, it's similar to, if you've heard of Patreon, where um, people can support an artist on a monthly basis by contributing um, a, a small amount each month and for that you get in exchange um, specific things in, in in this case with my backstage pass you get uh, my back catalog uh, invitations to backstage pass only live streams and online concerts um, discounts in my merch store you get access to everything that I do before it goes public all that sort of stuff all these kind of cool perks and it really supports me have to have a foundational um, uh, sort of income, I suppose, to to continue doing what I'm doing in light of COVID and all of those things where income just disappeared overnight. So this is a way of um, being a bit more sustainable, basically, and creating an exchange. But anyway, that's that's the basic idea of it. But what I wanted to share in this video is is why I'm deciding to do this. Why even do this at all? Why don't I, I don't know, try and get a billion streams on Spotify or... Um, I don't know whatever else there is. There isn't. There aren't that many other options at the moment. Honestly, like touring and playing live shows isn't really an option. So I had to come up with something else. And here's why I did it. So I put together a little thing here to quickly explain the reasons. So I'm going to tell you the old, the old way of the music industry, the new way of the music industry, and then the best way, the newest and best way, which is what I'm doing here. So, um. The old way to fleece artists was, um, first, I just want to say, before, I just want to outline that as I'm going through this, um, I want to make sure that I'm, I'm actually, I'm not complaining about the way things are. I'm just wanting to get on to um, coming up with a really positive solution that that's helpful. So um, yeah, I'm not complaining about the, the music business um and I'm not, there are no personal attacks in this. I just want to get that out of the way because that's important, I think, to not be really negative about it, but just to uh, get on with things and make things happen. So one of the old ways was record labels. And this is, a, this is just an amazing quote from this book from Ari Herstand, uh, where it says, over 98% of all acts who sign to major labels will fail, meaning 98% of 100 acts uh, major label signed this year will not recoup their advance and will be dropped. So basically the record label, you know, might give them $200,000 to go make a record and, and to release it and all that stuff. And 99 out of a hundred will not recoup that money and they'll be dropped by the label. So, um, so even if someone is somehow to get a major record deal, the odds against you that you will be in that 2% is well, very small. It's about 2%. Um, so that's that's the old way. Record labels, uh, basically, they would sign artists, they would give them an advance, and then uh, they kind of own the artist. They own all the intellectual property and the music and all that stuff for five years or ten years or forever, basically. Um, and so that's not really an avenue that's that appealing or interesting or actually very relevant to me or the music that I make. So the new way of fleecing artists is... Spotify and the and the music and music streaming. So this is a new way of the world. Like I said, I'm not complaining about this. It's just the way it is. But um, um, and I'm just going with that. So I wanted to give some context. So Daniel Ek, he's the CEO of Spotify, which is the biggest streaming platform in the world. Um, in April 2020, he was worth two billion dollars. In April 2021, he was worth 4.6 billion dollars. So when the pandemic started. Up until around about now, uh, he more than doubled uh, his his income. So in the last twelve months, he got a two point six billion dollar pay rise. 
So that's pretty cool. And that's pretty cool for him. And he's created this amazing platform. Like I said, nothing necessarily wrong with it. Um, so Spotify, I'm just going to make me smaller here. Uh, so Spotify is worth $67 billion and has seen its share price triple in the last 10 months. So that's great for Spotify. So now let's quickly have a look at um, what happens with the artists on Spotify. So artists are estimated to be paid about half a cent um, per stream on Spotify. For many mid-tier artists making a living, that also means working full-time. So you're working full-time and, and you're a mid-tier artist. Uh, so it doesn't seem like it's working out for many mid-tier artists. So there are currently 3 million people on the platform. 90% of all the streams on Spotify Spotify are now shared between 43,000 artists. So if you think of the billions and billions of streams that are happening, that's um, mainly concentrated to 43,000 artists. So that's one about 1.5% one of all the artists that are on the platform. So 1.5% of people on the platform um, 90% of the revenue goes to them. And again, like I said, I'm not complaining about that. I'm just giving context. So smaller or more niche artists like myself, they split the remaining 10% of the Spotify revenue between basically the rest of everyone on Spotify. So almost 3 million people split that 10% 10, that 10 of the revenue. So on average, that comes to... Just move myself. Uh, that comes to about $15 a month to live off from Spotify. So, you know, is that, does that sound like a new system that's really, really awesome? Or is it the old system with new technology? It's still the, a lot of the dynamics are the same. There's essentially the, the musician and then there's the audience over here. And then there's just layers and layers and layers of people and stuff in between where um, the artist creates the value. The music lover wants to hear it but it has to go through all these other people and all these other people get paid first. So, you know, Spotify gets paid before I get paid, um, that sort of thing. So just that's just some context. So when I did a, a survey recently to my email list, um, there were a lot of people, you know, are sensing this. They, they know there's something kind of a little bit up with streaming and it's not super fair to artists. So these were a few, these are direct quotes from people who answered that survey. So, the artists get paid very little through streaming platforms who will make all the money and that artists seem to get used and spat out by the industry. I love the setup of Spotify, the way it works, but to test how little artists get paid, I wish you, I wish uh, we could have a Spotify revolution where we force them to pay artists much more, but keep the system. I would pay more for it easily because it's one of my favorite ways to find new music plus access all the music I already love. Well, most of it. The piddly amount of revenue for artists from mainstream platforms. I fear for musicians being able to live off their art. It's always been hard, but the move to streaming and effect of COVID on live music would make it all the harder. And then the last one, I think, don't know enough about the industry, but with all artists, I sense other people feed off them while it is hard for them to feed themselves. And that's sort of the point that I've um, been getting to and the reason, the reason I started doing this backstage pass thing is... There, there are many, many, like I said, there are many, many layers between you as a music lover. Like if you're watching this, you are, I don't know, you're partially into my music and um, you're a music lover. And then there's the artist and then there's all this infrastructure in between. So all these other uh, people get paid. The label gets paid. The publicist gets paid. The promoter gets paid. The venue gets paid. Um even if I'm hiring musicians, the musicians get, those musicians get paid. The the engineer gets paid. Like all, <laughs> the, whoever organized the gig, they all get paid. So everyone gets paid and the musician is the last one to get paid if there's anything left over. Uh, and so I kind of was thinking about this for a long time. I just thought this is really broken. It's very back to front. Is there a way that, that the artist and, let me just put this, bring this back up here. So is there a way where the artist can can get paid directly from the music lover and the artist gets more of what they want and they can have a sustainable life and career as a creative person? And can the music lover get more of what they want as well? They don't have to go through all this filtered stuff either. So 
um, that's sort of the basic idea of what I started thinking about. So this is the new better way. I, I'm calling it the Mio way. I, I didn't come up with this, but um, this is really what I'm uh, focusing on doing over the next year, five, ten, uh, till I die. So we know there's uh, something a bit wrong with this picture that I've just been laying out. So so it's worth asking, how do we engage in something that guides us towards a more positive future for artists and music lovers alike? Is there a way that we can get more of what we want and just leave the big guys and all the middlemen out of it? All the people who are just like clipping, all taking a little bit of, of the pie. And then, you know, when it gets back to the artist, there's like six crumbs left. <laughs> and then they're like, okay, I'll keep doing it. I'll keep doing it. Um, so... All new, better things are coming to the world. They go through these five predictable stages. So I'm going to sort of explain this and explain uh, my place in it and potentially your place in it as well. So there's all these, you know, different companies or things, you know, Tesla, green energy uptake, organic food, plant-based options, Bitcoin and blockchain technology. They they all go through this um, example. So I'll just kind of go, I'll just skip some of that. But basically... Um, where, where most, um, like if we talk about Tesla or whatever, they started over here. They start with the innovators, people who are like the hardcore fans, people who are environmentalists, people who are into technology. And so Tesla came out with this, um, sports car, essentially. It was very expensive. Um, and it was the leading edge of the technology. And then people there's some uptake of that. And then, then it moved on to their early adopters where they came out with their second car, the Model S. And it's like a, it's a, still a luxury car and still quite expensive. And then they ended up moving kind of into this. I think they're kind of in this place now, the early majority. They came out with their kind of third car that's more um, accessible and cheaper and stuff like that. And so I started to think about my my music and really what I'm interested in doing with my music is I'm interested in connecting with people in this area here. So in my world, that's people who are really passionate about music. So this is music lovers who love music. I'm not as interested in mainstream um, or people who are laggards, people who are just lagging behind, um, interested necessarily in the mainstream uh, usual ways that people would kind of go about things. And so in, in, in my case, the, the first category of innovators, that's, that's people who are music fanatics, who will travel across the country to go see music, who think that if, if music disappeared, life wouldn't be as worth living. And then early adopters are people who are also music lovers or philanthropists, people who want to support artists. And the idea is, getting rid of all this stuff in between and bringing bringing these two people together so me and you essentially directly together a direct channel where we can have a mutually beneficial um, exchange of value is sort of the idea so in order to do that what I what I've done is I've created this backstage pass thing where if if you're not a huge fan of um, you know what music streaming is doing to artists, um, or if you just want to support an artist directly uh, through the weird times of COVID to have a more sustainable way of, of doing things. And you know, you probably know that's not happening through streaming and all this other stuff. Uh, this is an opportunity to, to do that. Basically uh, we can like join forces. We can get rid of all these other jerks and um, that allows me to create, create the music that I'm here to create. And for you to get the benefits of that. So you get the music first, you get it early, you are involved in the process um, and it's it's fun and it's rewarding. And so I actually, I started this backstage pass thing um, just after COVID uh, hit. Uh, and I'll just jump through this. This is more kind of talking about the reasons I decided to do this, um, but just in the interest of time. Um, when COVID wiped out all my plans for re releasing an album and touring overseas, I, cra I, uh, I craved to figure out how to do this in the best, most valuable and most authentic and transparent way possible. 
that was respectful of my audience. So I created the Mio Biskin backstage pass. So it took three months to actually like scramble and put it together in the first place to get the first version of it. Mikhail Pesky, a, a Frenchman, was the first to jump on board. He became a member on the 1st of May. Then a few other people have been jumping on board slowly over the over the course of the last year, essentially. And then I, I sort of decided when we started going back into lockdowns that this was something I needed to take way more seriously if I wanted to be able to look after myself financially and also, you know, my partner and pay rent and buy food and not uh, starve or struggle. Um, so in that time, I wanted to share a couple of things we've done. So we've done 14 backstage pass concerts. So they're private concerts just for backstage pass holders. Um, we set up a merch store. Uh, the backstage pass helped me fund the printing of my new book, which is here. Oh, you can't really see that very well, but this is my new book. So that's has not been released yet. I'm actually releasing that uh, with my backstage pass people in this coming Sunday, actually. And so if you want to be part of the book launch and get a copy of this book, um, the best way to do that is to um, become a backstage pass member. Um, yes, and we've also um, hung out in the Facebook group and we've come up with our own emoji which is the chair spin so when i'm doing shows <clears throat> i'm like rocking out just almost destroyed my guitar um <clears throat> chair spins and it's just been a very fun positive um engaged community of music lovers and it's honestly one of my favorite things in the whole month is is connecting with people in the backstage pass thing and sharing everything that i'm up to and um given everyone the the kind of the the scoop on on what's coming. So so that's about all of that. Yes, then is music music time. So so that actually went a little bit longer than I was hoping, but I wanted to just give you context as to why I'm doing this and um and and that I would love for you to be on board. If you're a music lover and you'd like to support me to continue doing what I'm doing. Um, there are there are a number of different tiers that you can support at. The the um, the entry tier is five bucks. That's essentially like buying me a coffee once a month. Um, but the way that this works is if enough people are chipping in a little bit, it really, really adds up. And um, so it's not putting the load on any one person. If everyone is kind of chipping in a couple of bucks here and there and... Um, uh, then it it can really create this thing where I can have a sustainable music career and I don't have to uh, stress out about stuff so much. And for most people, it's um, you know we we would very easily waste or lose five bucks a month or spend it on something dumb every month. Um, so rather than spending on something dumb, you can spend it on something awesome, which is uh, supporting me. <laughs> awesome. Cool. Well, thanks for checking this out. I know that kind of went a bit long. I uh, hope you learned some cool things from it too. Just a little bit of an update on the music industry. And I hope you'll join us in the backstage. If you can't for some reason, you can't afford to, or you just are not in a position to, or, or you don't want to, that's okay as well. I uh, really am just putting this out there for people who are interested. They can be involved and they want to be involved. Uh, then we welcome you with open arms. So thanks for checking this out. I uh, look forward to catching you soon. And uh, there's also going to be a uh, closing party this Friday, 5 p.m. Melbourne time. Um, so come along to that. It's going to be mainly just me playing music and talking a bit about Backstage Pass and celebrating people who have joined. Um, but it's just a, a free online concert for you for being part of this community. So I hope you'll join us then. Peace out. Talk to you soon. Thanks. Bye.